Titan and Random House generously provided me with a copy of Star Wars The High Republic Tales of Enlightenment, a new semi-anthology set during Phase 2 of the High Republic era. This collection comprises six stories, most of which initially appeared in Star Wars Insider magazine. This newly released hardcover is the first time they've all been gathered, with a never-before-released additional story. This book also features an interview with George Mann, the New York Times best-selling author of all the stories, and discussions with his fellow Star Wars writers Zoreda Cordova, Tessa Gratton, and Lydia Kang, who share insights into the High Republic Phase 2. The anthology is set in 382 BBY, a period of prosperity for the Galactic Republic and the Jedi Order. Surprisingly, the title Enlightenment refers not to a philosophical concept, but to a tap bar on Jedi. The narrative follows regular patrons of Enlightenment, weaving smaller tales within its overarching story. New Prospects is a fun story that feels right at home in the Star Wars universe. We get to see Jedi in action from the point of view of an outsider. We as the audience know and understand the Jedi Order much more thoroughly than most of those who live within the universe. Having the point of view focus on someone watching a Jedi do his thing without the inner monologue and explanations was a cool perspective. A different perspective lives up to its name. We get a new perspective on the Force. The Force and what balance means is a constant topic of conversation for Star Wars fans. This story brings a relatively fresh perspective. On the surface, I thought it was man just poking a bit of fun at the most common misconception of what balance in the Force means, but it goes deeper than that. The unusual suspect introduces another Force group, the Brotherhood of the Ninth Door. This group is known for their use of the dark side. The member of the Brotherhood in question ends up being the hero of the story involving a holdup at Enlightenment. We're left to ponder light and dark. We're told there are two sides of the same coin. Just because the Brotherhood uses the dark doesn't make them evil. At least, that's his claim. This one would have been more compelling if we had more time to play with the concepts of light and dark being two sides of the same coin. The stick-up didn't really seem necessary. No Such Thing as a Bad Customer has some larger profile characters from the High Republic make their way into the story. There's a massive battle on Jetta. It spills into the bar. The heroes from other content in the High Republic, along with the characters that we've been following for the Tales of Enlightenment, work together to save those taking refuge in the bar. The big issue I had with this one was the bird's eye view outline looks a lot like the story that we just read before this one, especially when the first two tales offered such a fresh take on things we've seen. Last Orders is the last story that originated in Insider Magazine. We jump forward a few months from the battle in the last tale. A Jedi Master named Lee Haro arrives. This is the Jedi Master from New Prospects, the story that kicked the whole anthology off. Harrow tells the story this time. It was really cool getting a story told during the era of the Old Republic, because this era is something of a can in gray area. To keep the Old Republic in a gray area of canon, Harrow implies the story may not be true, but as long as his message got across, it doesn't matter. We end on a sense of things continuing on with the rest of the patrons of Enlightenment. Missing Pieces, the story exclusive to this collection, is the only story where some prior High Republic knowledge really helps. I felt like there was an impact not being made on me since I haven't even finished Phase 1 yet, let alone Phase 2. This tale takes place five years after the Battle of Jetta. the battle featured in No Such Thing as a Bad Customer. It seems like a lot of existing storylines are addressed and names that should be familiar are thrown in. Throughout this, I've passively mentioned characters and events that come from the wider narrative of the High Republic. If you aren't up to date on that part of the Star Wars timeline, it's not necessarily a deal breaker for most of the stories. I'm fine hearing about some things in these short stories before having got there in the larger format books and comics, but Missing Pieces is one I'm going to have to revisit when I finish Phase 2. The supplemental interviews, companion, and reading order are great additions. I wouldn't buy the book just for these, but having them as extra extras adds even more value to what you get. The book itself is a nice hardcover with thick, glossy pages. The stories are kept in the magazine column format, which makes them even faster reads. Reading through Tales of Enlightenment took me back to my early teenage years when my Star Wars reading was at its highest. Given the fact that this is a series of shorts set in a bar, I got great flashbacks to exploring Tales from Mos Eisley Cantina, which is now a Legends book. Enlightenment is an improved version of that since the stories have a through line and they do connect to the wider Star Wars narrative. Star Wars The High Republic Tales of Enlightenment is available now wherever you get your books. I had a good time with it overall. There were some diminishing returns midway through, but the final story from the ones that appeared in Star Wars Insider Magazine ended strong. It's hard to objectively judge missing pieces since I 
I was, in fact, missing some pieces. There's a link in the description where you can grab your own copy of Tales of Enlightenment, and make sure you watch this video next for more of my coverage on Expanded Universe's Star Wars stories.